verdict today was again that the officers get off, right? That the officer gets off. So we noticed coming in. I didn't notice. It was pointing out, pointed out to me that um, there was a state trooper on the on the off on ramp of uh, leave, leaving, kind of make sure they keep the peace. So I'd like to offer tonight's presentation, my, my offering tonight, of a different kind of solution to the problem. Because they expect that it's riots and shut the highway down and, and all of those kinds of things. That's their expectation. And if you notice, the push is to incite us is to incite us. Can you see that number? Yes. 1146. This is how many young black men have been gunned down in 2015. In 2015, between the age of 15 and 34. Because they don't see any value in these lives, right? And this looks like this to them. So if, if this is really all about the money, first of all, why are the brothers on the street? They're trying to get the money, right? right? That's right. If there are, are, are less of a population to deal with, or you can card, I don't even want to put the number of incarcerations. Okay, that's way too many. I need like a lot of pages for that, right? It's all commerce. The courthouse is a cha-ching. Okay? So if it's all commerce, why are we not dealing with it like it's commerce? Well, what does commerce mean? Commerce means money. Commerce means money. This topic tonight has the ability to deal with them killing our sons in the street. So you might say, well, how is that? Right? How is that? Value. Value. These 1,100, 146 lives that were taken is because they see no value. But if these lives had value, it would not be happening. It would not be happening. So I'm going to show you a way tonight that we put value in our own community. When we talk about protecting that which matters most. So I wanted to get that part off my heart and into yours before I started so that as I'm coming back to this, we're going to revisit this as I'm going through the presentation so that we understand what this equals. Fair enough? Fair enough. All right, you with me? Yes, ma'am. All right, very good. I'm going to hop up here. Can you hear me? Is this on? Not yet. Okay. It's making it happen. It's making it happen. It's making it happen. It's happening. It's happening. It's made it happen. Very good. So we're here, and I don't have the clicker. So we're here tonight to talk about healthy finances. We're here tonight to talk about how money works, the system of knowledge and the process. Or she be Kim to call me. Um, the system of knowledge and the process about how natural healing works. So we're gonna, we are all friends, community here tonight, whether we just met for the first time or not. And we're facing a very serious issue because it was texted to me earlier today that tonight was gonna be about lifting people up. Well, it was always about helping families rise. No family left behind. 
financial. And we're going to talk about how our finances actually do make a difference in creating value in the lives of, or on the lives of our sons and daughters and families. So, and where are point? There we go. The miracle of money wisdom. We've been doing this in churches. And this is one of the slides that we use when we talk about our people perish for the lack of knowledge. Well, what knowledge? Financial knowledge. We have done everything. We have sat in at counters, used separate facilities, marched, been water hosed, attacked by dogs. We've done everything in the civil rights movement. And today, the officer still walks. So how far have we really come? How far have we really come? I'm going to move past this. We have a money ministry. I want you to realize that this is ordained for us to have money. But we rather, for many reasons, that we are not to blame for, in some instances, and others we are, still choosing poverty. We cannot solve a problem, Albert Einstein, we cannot solve a problem with the same level of thinking that created them. We cannot solve our problems with the same level of thinking that created them. So we keep doing the same thing over and over and over again in response to what they keep doing over and over and over again, and we're not coming to any new solution. So we're talking about a new model of reality tonight, a new model of reality, new systems for living. So I'm going to talk to you about money, the system of knowledge and the process about how money works, we got to be tied to some money, right? Because when we look in our community, we're not seeing any, so where is it? Where is it? So the money is with the insurance companies. Now, I'm not here tonight to sell you life insurance or car insurance or house insurance. I'm here to tell you some truths that we run from. We don't have the patience or the desire to know really how to get out of the situation that we're in because it's right before our very eyes and I'm going to show it to you. But we have to get to where the money is. Transamerica is one of the largest insurance companies in this nation. It's owned by a company named Agon which owns World Financial Group. So those of us in the room who get it about this message, we have chosen to be the boots on the ground for World Financial Group because no family left behind. Helping families rise financially. Oops. So the mission is helping all families, families from all walks of life, create a better future. But we have a specific situation in our community. Specific situation. And with this situation, there are three things I want you to keep in mind as I'm going through this information, filtered through how I opened tonight. Can this information help someone you know, a friend, a family member, yourself, and are you intrigued with the business platform? Because we cannot talk about money and not talk about business. We cannot talk about money and not talk about business, okay? We need strength on our side. We need power. We need strength on our side. And the financial strength is in the insurance companies, as I said, and Transamerica, 
remember this or write this date down. Transamerica was started in 1906. And the company that owns it, Aegon, which is in the Dutch Netherlands, right, 147th largest company in the world owns Transamerica. So Transamerica is the North American brand. North American brand. I'm taking my time deliberately so that this kind of really sinks in. Because in our community, we would rather stick pins in our eyes than listen to this kind of conversation. Because I'm not up here shaking my hips. There's no music playing in the background, right? No sports, none of that. None of the distractions tonight. Just real talk. Is that okay? Just real talk, all right? So the North American brand of the 147th largest company in the world is represented in this room tonight. How do we make that happen? $880 trillion strong. How do we make that happen? How do we align ourselves with that kind of strength? How many recognize some of the names up here? Call them out if you know one or two. OK. Household names. Household names. We all know these names, right? So the only time that we see them, however, is either we're getting benefits on a job, and we're getting this menu over here on the, in the red side, IRAs and annuities and let me step out the way. Right, index, universal life, those kinds of things that you get in the benefits packages when you go get a what? A job, right, a job. So I don't mean to offend anyone, and jobs are okay, but they generally make you just over broke, right? Just over broke. And then you wonder at the end of that time that you've been with that job, what do you do next, and how do you have enough money to live on without working until you just fall over. So we're gonna talk about that too. Is that all right? Yeah. So strength, because I get to represent as a broker all of the companies that you see up here that you already know. So they're not on trial. They've been around for hundreds, hundreds of years too, right? So they're not on trial here. We already know these, these folks. We get to represent them as brokers and provide all of these services outside of HR at your job, okay? Because when they give it to you at your job, you don't own it. They own it. They own it. So financial literacy. Why is there such a problem with financial literacy? Because only four states in the entire country teach anything in one semester about personal finance. We ought to be outraged about that. But we've been conditioned and dumbed down so that we really don't even know that this is a problem. But you graduate from high school and can't balance a checkbook, right? And you get a master's degree and nobody ever sat down with you and did a personal financial statement. But you a master, okay? No offense, okay? So if only four states are teaching this, where are we gonna get the information? We're not supposed to. Because of that number, four, it's no wonder that the average household is $118,000 in debt. Not car, not house, $118,000 in credit card debt. Okay? In credit card debt. 40% of Americans don't have any kind of idea that they need to be saving for retirement. If you work until you're 65 and you live until you're 95, how many years is that? What are you going to do to take care of yourself in those years? Are you going to be able to maintain the same level of lifestyle as when you were on the job or not? That becomes the question, right? But we don't think about that. We just want to know how much is going to be in my check at the end of the week or the end of the two weeks or the end of the month. 72% of workers don't have a pension plan. 
They've already robbed the pension plans. That has gone the way of the dinosaur, right? Who has a pension anymore unless you're in the military or you've just been at your job so long and they still happen to have one? As an industry insider, I can tell you, I have a, a document that's about this thick that is the plan for how they deliberately eradicated and stole the pensions from the workers. It was a plan, strategy. So the cushy number for when there's not going to be any more Social Security is 2034. But the real number is more like 2022. It's 2017. That's not too far off. Do you know anyone who's going to be impacted when there's no more Social Security? Yeah. Yeah, most of us do. Most of us are. Right? Most of us are. So if you see yourself in some of these numbers, whether it's the debt or you're not sure how much money you're going to have when you retire to live comfortably, when you can't work anymore. And retirement, brothers and sisters, is not about being 65 years old. You retire when you have enough money. Retirement is a money conversation. It's not an age conversation. Okay? So find yourself here. Check in. Find your family in these numbers. Check in. So financial literacy starts by creating a foundation. We have to do, we get to do things differently. I talked about a new model of reality in our community. In order for us to create a new model of reality, we've got to first tear down some mindsets that are not working for us. Not working for us. And then we get to build a new foundation that will work for us. Why do I know it'll work for us? Because it's been working for Aegon since the late 1830s, right? The late 1800s. And it's been working for Transamerica since 1906. And all the old money have used it, so it must still be working. But we don't know anything about it because how many states in the United States teach anything about financial literacy? Four. Four, right, it's laughable, right? It would, be re it, it, it would be hilarious if it wasn't so sad and serious. The first cornerstone is protection, proper protection. Keep this in mind with regard to these numbers over here. The first cornerstone in our new reality is protection. Since we're having a money conversation, we have to talk about growing that money. So the second foundation, the second cornerstone of our foundation is growth. And if we're going to grow money, we've got to grow it safely. How many remember 2008? 2008. People lost half of everything that they had saved their whole life in 2008 market crash. And fourth, the, other, the last corner is about tax advantaged status, tax advantaged status. So I'm going to dive deeper into these as we keep moving on. This would be lesson number two in financial literacy. It's called the rule of 72. How many have heard of, heard of it before? The rule of 72. It is also developed by Albert Einstein. Remember the quote that I gave you in the beginning that you can't solve a problem with the same thinking that created it, right? Okay, same Albert Einstein that created the theory of relativity, okay? The rule of 72, if you take the number 72 and divide your interest rate into it, it'll tell you how many years it takes your money to double. Is that valuable to you, to know that information? Yes, yes. Why is it valuable? So when's the last time you used some money? Anybody? When's the last, today? When's the last time you used the law of relativity? Uh, but they taught that to you. They made sure you knew that, but they didn't teach you the rule of 72. And by the way, before I even go into it and tell you how it works, 
This is short division. We could have learned this in the fifth grade. We could have learned this in the fifth grade. So at 1%, based on the rule of 72, you divide, one in, you divide 72 by 1 is how much? 72. So if you have a dollar today, you won't have $2 for another 72 years. OK? Yeah, wow. The rule of 72. Now, if you're getting 1%, you're not even getting 1%. The banks are not giving you 1%. The banks are giving you 0 0.0 and then a number and then the percentage sign. So if you're getting less than 1%, your money will not double in your lifetime. Check in, right? Let it sink in. I mean, I'm deliberately going slow and taking my time. Because this is us in this room on this night, we get to get this. At 4%, your money doubles every 18 years. At 65, you've got a whopping $40,000. People make that in a year. At 6%, your money doubles every 12 years. You've got 80,000 at 65. At 10%, your money doubles every 7.2 years. At 65, you have $320,000. At 72, $640,000, over half a million dollars. So if this is the case and the bank is not giving you 1%, and not giving you 1%, your money will not double in your lifetime if your money is in the bank. So what questions should you be asking me when you look at these numbers? How do I get what? How do I get 10%? If, I'm, if the bank is not going to give me 1%, where in the world am I going to get 10%? So I didn't come here to, pull your, to yank your chain tonight. I came here to give you real answers and solutions. So I'm going to show you where you get 10% and more. And this is part of, of the things that we don't know because there's how many states in the country that teach financial literacy? Four. And for those of you young people who are here in, that are here tonight, this is serious for you, okay? Because you have many doubling periods in your life. Your children have many doubling periods in your life. You gotta bring this home, it's a strategy. We could have learned this in the fifth grade. Yes, there are places where you can get 10% that you can know about. So the next lesson of financial literacy is, well, where do we put the money? What kind of options do we have to put our money? All right, so fixed is a straight line. It's a flat line, right? Flat line is usually not too good, right? It's not a good sign when you flat line, right? So that means that whatever the rate is that you're getting is not going to go up and it's not going to go down. You with me? That's called fixed. The next one is variable. Variable means that your money is on a roller coaster, all right? It's up today and down tomorrow and up for a couple of days and down for a couple of weeks and, and that's just how it goes. And that's called gambling. Why is it called gambling? Because you put your money in there and you hope for the best. That's not a plan. That's gambling. And then there's what's called the index. The index is built so that when the market goes up, your money goes up. And when the market goes down, your money locks in, principal and interest. And when the market goes up, your money goes up. And when the market goes down, your money locks in, principal and interest. And so when the market goes, when the market goes up, your money goes, and when the market goes, your money goes, locks in. Principal and interest, right? So that's not gambling. So how many have heard of fixed? How many have heard of fixed accounts? Fixed accounts, okay, everybody's heard of fixed accounts. How many have heard of variable accounts? Right, that's the stock market, in case you weren't familiar with what I'm talking about. The variable is the stock market. How many have heard of indexed accounts? Okay, so indexed accounts are where your money is safe. 
You can't lose. You cannot lose. So I'll talk about that a little bit more as we go on. So if there is a place where you could put your money, it, of the three, where would you choose to put your money? Okay, we're making progress. So when we talk about creating a new model of reality and a new system for living and creating new foundations and learning more than the four states would have wanted us to know, things that we could have learned when we were in the fifth grade that would have made a huge difference in our lives and how we handle and deal with money if we had known that years ago. This is called what I call the culture scape, right? So there's a, there's a culture of money. There's a culture of money called commerce. There's a culture of money called, commer called consumerism. There's a culture of money called wealth, and this represents the culture. Where are people in the culture, in the society, putting their money? So in A and B is where 95% of the people in the country put their money, either in fixed, and we already said fixed is what? Flatline, right? And, and, and fixed accounts are your, your savings, your, your CDs, the money in the bank. Okay. Also, it is in traditional life insurance, like your um, whole life, because it grows cash value. But it's a fix. It's not going anywhere. Okay. It's going to be the same. It's going to be right where you left it, when you left it there. It's not going up, and it's not going to go down either. All right. So why do people put their money in the bank? They feel safe. So why would you feel safe with your money in the bank? Because, because, because it's the bank and, you, because you trust the bank. Right, okay, you trust the bank. And, and, and Melissa said something very interesting. Everybody does it. Right? That's why it's part of the culture, because everybody does it, because everybody feels safe, right? And everybody trusts the bank. Everybody trusts the bank. How many people in here have heard of an index account again? Okay, so very few. If, the, if, there was, if you had so much trust in the bank, why haven't they told you about this? Why haven't they told you about this, okay? They can, they can give it to you, right? They're making the money off of you, right? So they're making a lot of money off you, and you're making no money when you bank with them, right? How, how, how many, at less than 1%, at 1%, how many years does it take your money to double? When will you have $2? <laughs> okay? In 72 years, you trust that? Well, maybe not now, but you did before you came in here because you didn't have a frame of reference, right? You didn't have a frame of reference because they're not, nobody's telling us this information. So if this is the way the culture is going and people put their money in the bank because they, they feel like it's safe, because the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, the FDIC, is insuring my money. So if anything happens to my money, I'm going to be okay because the bank got my money, okay? So the Federal Deposit Insurance, keyword, corporation, insures your money up to how much? 250000 $250,000, okay? There's a reason that it's only insured up to $250,000. I'll come back and tell you what that reason is. So over here in the bank, your money is safe, but you can't make any money, right? So you have more safety, but less opportunity to make money, to make your money grow. Over on the other side, where the other part of the 95% of the people have their money is in the market. And what do we say the market is? It's the, and right, and the market is gambling. It's, throw your, it's put your money in there, 
and hope for the best, right? You might as well be rolling dice, okay? So if there's no guarantees when your money's in the market, none, no guarantees, that means mutual funds, how many have a 401k? Heard of a 401k, right? Your 401k is in the market. That's why when you get your quarterly statement, you have a knot in your stomach because you don't know whether you lost money or not, right? So if there are no guarantees and there's only a partial guarantee when you use life insurance, cash value in a, in a life insurance policy, the insurance company is going to insure the part that's not in the market. Okay, so 95% are in A and B, 5%, 5%, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5% are in C. This is a cultural experience. Their money is not in the bank, right, except with they enough to pay their bills, maybe, but they're not trying to save money and have $2 in 72 years, all right? So their money is in the index. An index is a life insurance instrument, different word. I didn't say policy. I said financial instrument, okay? It is a financial instrument. An index universal life insurance, 100% guaranteed, cannot lose your money, cannot lose your money. So, this is, the, this is what the culture looks like. The 95, part of the 95% of people over here in the, have their money in the bank, their reality is this. 1,146 shootings in our community in 2015. It looks like this. Our community is not over there in the market, even though they're still part of the 95% too, because I don't want you to think that this is only a game that's being played on us, okay? So they're over there in the market, they can't hardly make it either. They do a little bit better, but not much, not much. So I'm gonna keep coming back to this number over here, all right? So the culture in the middle, the 5%, the old money, the wealthy, and it's not about color, race, creed, or religion. It's not about that. It's about knowledge. My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. What knowledge? Financial knowledge. Because how many states in the United States of America teach a, yeah, right, lack of knowledge. 100% guaranteed in the index, and we're gonna talk about the index a little bit more. The third, I think it's the third, lesson that I would have you know about financial literacy is that you can choose your tax status. You can choose your tax status. You can be in tax now, tax later, or tax advantaged. Tax now looks like you got paid, and they already took the taxes out before you got your money. That's tax right now. Okay, how many experienced that? Yes, right, you can't even get your money. Savings account, certificates of deposit, all of that great big less than 1% in the bank is taxed now because you pay taxes on any gains that you get on your less than 1%. Second is tax later. Tax later, your 401, your 403, and your IRAs. So I asked how many people had a 401k, how many people know people who have a 401k. 300 million people in this country have 401ks, 403bs, okay? That's tax later. That's called deferred, tax deferred, right? How many are familiar with that term? Tax deferred, that means you're gonna pay your taxes later, okay? Got something to tell you about the tax deferment issue. And tax advantage, who knows what that is? 
Nobody knows what that is. If you open the Wall Street Journal and they start talking about tax advantage, that immediately goes, oh, it can be the headline. And we're not even going to read that story because we don't even know what those two words mean. All right? So we're going to share with you what they mean. Woo! So let's talk about, we, we already said that we know what tax now is, right? That's they already took it before you got your check, tax now. Tax later is deferred. So don't, don't uh, tune out on me when you see the charts and the graphs, all right? Because we have, we, we have to get this. The big gray part is government spending. Government spending. The little blue line that you see is your personal taxes, your personal tax. In 1946, at the end of World War II, government spending was 121.25%. That's a lot of government spending. You see how high that is. But the taxes, the personal taxes, was 94%. What does that mean? That means if you made $100,000, you only brought home $6,000. The tax rate was 94%, okay? As spending went down, right, the big gray part, as the spending went down, the blue line, your personal taxes, kind of went down too. Now as we come over here to 2014, we see that the gray part is getting back up there. And the blue line is not caught up with the gray part, with the government spending. So what has to happen? Taxes have to go up. So who watched the news about three weeks ago? Who knows what's happening with the taxes? They're going up to how much? 55% is going to be the new tax rate. Right now we're about at 36, 40%. If you're not paying attention, if this is information you'd rather not know, they're just going to take more than half of your check. 55% is a lot, right? That's 55 cents out of every dollar. All right, so if I can like break it way down. That's 55 cents out of every dollar that they talk, that they're getting ready to do right now, the tax rate. So why am I sharing it with you? Because whose money does the government have to spend? That's all the money they have, right? They only have the taxpayers' money to spend. And they're spending at 80% in 2014, and we know it's higher than that now. That's why there's a tax hike conversation in the atmosphere that most of us are not paying any attention to. Why we don't pay attention to it? Because we're distracted by a whole lot of things and this over here on this board. The 1,146 young men who were gunned down and the police got off. We're distracted by this. That's why in Salisbury tonight, the house ain't full because people are sad and angry and thinking about retaliation and how are we going to do it. We have to have a different plan and it's a money game with them. To us, it feels like lives. It doesn't feel like lives to them, okay? It feels like money to them. You with me? Okay, so we're distracted. We don't hear this conversation that taxes are going up. If you have a 401k and it's, a, and it's taxed later, what does that mean for your 401k? Your, your mom's 401k, your dad's 401k, your friend's 401k, your grandma 401k. They're going to take half of it. They're not going to have it. So if you retire at 65 and you live to 95 and you thought that your 401k was going to have enough money in it for you to do that, sorry, Charlie. It's not. Because tax later means... Later, the taxes are going to be 55% or more, right, or more. And the money that you thought you were going to have in your 401k 
is gone. It's not enough to help you live a comfortable lifestyle. So 300 million people in this country have a 401k. It was the plan that they put in place to replace the pension. It took the corporations off the hook for making sure you had a comfortable retirement. They made it personally responsible. In our community, we sometimes we don't do so good with personal responsibility. But they make it sound real good because they don't tell you this part when you go to HR. They just sign you up and offer you to match. All right? They offer you to match. If you're putting in more than the match, you need to stop. You can't move it because it doesn't belong to you. Okay? News flash. Your 401k does not belong to you. If it did, you wouldn't have to wait till you're 59 and a half years old in order to use it without taxes and penalty. It does not belong to you. Let me tell you who it belongs to. 300 million people every pay period put their money into it and cannot touch it until they're 59 and a half. But at the moment that deposit is made, somebody else is using your money right now. Right now. Not deferred like later. For you, is later. For them, it's right now. Okay? It's a money game for them, all right? So that is the alarm, one of the alarms we need to be sounding for people who are in the tax deferment trap. Taxes are going up. They've already announced it in the news. We just don't read the papers that they put it in, all right? And I saw it on TV and I don't even watch television. I gotta, but I gotta deal with the most high that things I need to know I always find out, all right? Yeah, so this is what we're dealing with. So let's revisit this. Tax now is checking and savings and CDs and stocks and mutual funds. That's tax now. That means that you're gonna pay taxes on your gains or your interest in the year that you earned them. You gotta claim it on your, on your 1040, okay? Capital gains. Tax later, your 401k, your 403b, your SEP IRA accounts, annuities, pensions, and yes, you pay taxes on your social security and investment property, okay? Tax deferred, tax later, is tax deferred. Tax, oh, tax advantage means what? Tax free. Well, if this is, if you have a choice, of what your tax status is gonna be, what would your choice be? Tax-free. Tax you get to choose tax-free. Well, what's in the tax-free column? The Roth IRA and the Roth 401k, kinda, sorta. Because you're still subject to the same penalties, okay? It's just that they don't, tax, they don't charge you taxes if you leave it there. But you're still subject to the 59 and a half and the mandatory, well, I didn't tell you this part, if you don't take it out by the time you're 72, they have uh, required, what's it called? Uh, required distribution, they make you take it at 72 so they can get their taxes, okay? And there are people who are today who don't wanna take them, they don't need it, but they have to. So they, because the government wants them to pay the taxes on it, all right? So, in my mind, the, that, let's scratch the top one. Who knows what a 529 is? This is we're talking about tax-free now. A 529 are your education funds. If you're gonna save money for your children, you can put it in a 529 and it's tax-free. Tax-free. When you take it out, it's tax-free. But when you take it out, you have to stroke the check to an institution of higher learning. Okay, it has to, you have to write the check to a college or a university. Now suppose you have a child that does not want to go to college, right? Not a bad thing, they might want to be an entrepreneur, right? They might want to do something else. They might want to get a professional license and become a financial professional, 
Don't need, don't need, to, uh, don't need a student loan for that. Okay? So suppose they don't want to go to college. What happens to your money? It's not still in there. What happens to your money? They take 40% of it off the top and tax you on the rest. Okay? But it was tax free. <laughs> it was tax free, right? But you cannot do anything with it. They have control, right? And so we get to get out of a place where everybody's controlling our life but us especially our money. In our community, we spend $1.2 trillion in six seconds every year. We get paid, we go get our hair and nails done, and we're off to the mall and we're giving it all back. The rest we pay in bills, and we don't even understand that the first rule of wealth is pay yourself first. That doesn't mean go buy Michael Kors. That's not paying yourself first, that's paying Michael Kors first. Okay? Now, I ain't mad at Michael Kors and Gucci and all that stuff because I got my share, okay? And I have to say that because I, don't, because I don't want you to, when you see me with mine, I don't want you to think I'm a hypocrite, okay? <laughs> all right, I don't want you, I don't want to be in, in and I don't want to be in, in, in to Harris Teeter and go, ah, she said, right? Well, but here's the difference for me. When I bought my $1,100 Michael Kors bag, I had more than $1,100 to put in it at the moment that I bought the bag. That is not the case for most people, right? The bag is always worth more than they ever have on them, okay? That's right, it's true, all right? So I'm right, real talk, okay, real talk. So I'm just saying, because I, I, I have my share, okay? So we, do we understand what a 529 is now? Okay, all right, are you learning something? Okay, high five your neighbor and say, learning is fun. <laughs> All right. All right, so we got what the 529 is. What is a 7702? Okay, so your index accounts are your 7702. How many have heard of that before tonight? Right, we just had an appointment, right? And you knew, right? It's, it's so, so rare that anybody comes into the room or we do a one-on-one a, a -on -one as we're helping families rise financially that they know what a, an, an index account is. So by show of hands, how many know what a 401k is? And how many know what an index is? Okay. So except for those who are with me, <laughs> right? Very few, all right? So in the culture scape, right? Remember we looked at the culture scape? The 95% don't know what a 7702 is, but the 5% do. 5%, not much. They know. 95%, big number. They don't know, okay? The 7702 is your index account. So how did we say the index account works? When the market goes up, your money uh, goes up. And when the market goes down, your money locks in at principal and interest. Okay, and the interest is earned compound. The Albert Einstein, you get to use, right? right? The rule of 72 is the eighth wonder of the world. Okay? They taught you about the seven, they didn't tell you about the eight. <laughs> okay? So, the 7702 is the index. So how does the index work? We know that it goes up and down, right? And when the market goes down, your money locks in. We already got that part. But how, remember we said, what was the question that needed to be asked on the rule of 72 was how do you get to 10%? And that in the index, your money is guaranteed no loss. So the way the index work is as it's doing its thing, going up and going up and don't go down, but going up, there's a floor and there's a cap. So it's growing inside this corridor, this growth corridor. And at the bottom is 0.75%. That 
That means that if the market is doing zero or less, right? You see those minus signs when you see the market drop 300 points, 1,000 points? That means that people are losing money, okay? In this account, your money stops at 0.75. So while everybody else is losing money, you are still earning 0.75. Can't lose. Can't lose, right? Basically, yeah. Yeah, basically true, okay? You cannot lose. It's guaranteed by the insurance company. Your money is not in the market. It's mirroring the index. That's why it's called an index account. Well, what is the index? The index that this 7702 is mirroring that I choose for most of my clients is the global. The Hong Sang, which is the Hong Kong market. The 50 Euro stocks, which is the European market. And the S&P 500, top 500 corporations in the United States, S&P 500, okay? So as they go up and down in the market, your money follows that, but it doesn't, go to, it doesn't do the down part, okay? Your money is at the insurance company. So if you thought, that the bank was the safest place to put your money? And if you thought that you were gonna earn any money at the bank, and if you thought that you weren't gonna pay taxes on the money that you earn at the bank, uh, you're wrong, okay? The bank is not where the money is. The money is at the insurance companies. Remember all those names that you, are, that you knew? Right? All those names, Voya, Prudential, Transamerica, Pacific Life, right? Allianz. The, the insurance companies is where the money is. So you have a contract with an insurance company, your money's in the insurance company, and they give you the index, they give you the return based on what the index does, and your money is safe at all times. At all times. So there's a cap, so there's a floor. How much is the floor? 0.75, can't lose. There's a cap of 15%. Your money can grow from 0.75 to 15%. If your money doubles every, every 7.2 years at 10%, at 15%, it doubles faster. Would that make sense? Okay, it makes sense. Okay, so while we're on the make sense part, think, think about this. How many have credit cards? Know somebody who has credit cards, okay? The rule of 72, how long it takes your money to double, works the same way on your credit card. So if your credit card is 18 or 22%, the interest is doubling on you every two to three years. You will never, ever, pay it off. You will never pay it off, okay? It's designed for you to never, ever be able to pay it off, okay? It's a setup, okay? So be clear that the rule of 72 can work for you, and most of the time, for most people, it's working against you. Are we clear? Does that make sense? Okay, very good. I gotta go back. Is that okay? I, wanna, I wanted to put this up here while I was talking to you about that because this is how we help families. I need to go back to the 7702. Can I go back one more? No. Because in order for it to relate here, your 7702, Okay, your 7702 grows, has the potential to grow to 15%, and there's no loss, okay? If everything is commerce, and, and, and do you think that we've established that, that everything is money? Have maybe a little bit? Are you getting the picture that it real, that the financial literacy piece this, this how money works, this system of knowledge and process about how money works, that the entire culture scape, 
that we live in. The whole society is based on the movement of money, and I'm going to talk about that some more. But I want you to be really clear about that right now. Okay? So I'm going to share something with you right now that is very sensitive. It may make you angry, or, not, or, or it could make you mildly to moderately to significantly uncomfortable. All right? So I'm going to share this with you. In the 5% families, when a child is born, they put a life insurance policy of a million dollars on the baby. Okay, 15 days old is the legal age. They put a million dollars on the child in an indexed account. As the child is growing up, the index account is growing as well. By the time we get ready to put the child in school, the index account can pay for private school. By the time the child is getting ready to go to junior high or middle school or high school and you got prom, you got all this the expenses, right? Not to mention all the sports, the soccer, the football and all those things that cost money that you do with children, right? The index account is paying for all of that. Notice that the parents are not paying any of that out of their paycheck. It's all being funded by the policy that they put on the child. Now, they had that child and maybe three or four more, okay? And the same thing is happening. The same thing is happening. So now their children grow up with value. Their children grow up with value dollars and cents value, okay? So since when they graduate from high school, college is already paid for, down payment on the first car is already paid for, the wedding is already paid for, the down payment on the house is already taken care of, and all they did was put some money away for the time that the child was growing up. Money takes time to grow. Okay? Money takes time to grow. And when you begin to understand that and you see that scenario, they call that in their community, in that 5% culture, they call that family planning. In the 95% culture, family planning is take this pill, go wear that rubber, or get an abortion. That's what family planning looks like for the 95%. Okay? My sister bearing witness, she said, it's true, it's true, okay? And if you don't believe me, if you go, if you drive through affluent communities, they have billboards for fertility pills and doctors, right? Come get more fertile so you can have more babies. In our community, you see AIDS, right? Yeah, yeah, you see AIDS billboards, right? And what doctor you can go see to not have that baby? Okay? Why is that happening? Why is that happening? Who's talking? Oh, yes, because why? The light is... We don't know about the things that we have... You know, we've been trying to live in this entitlement conversation for way too long, okay? So we don't know about the things that are available to us when we take personal responsibility, not look for entitlement and the handout. Because this is not about the handout, right? So this conversation that we're having right now is about helping families rise. And in order to do that, we get to take personal responsibility and put value on our babies. Because I submit to you that if our 15 to 34 year olds, and I did the math today, 1,146 young men have an index account worth $500,000 each, that is $573 million of value in the community that's on their lives. Now, what would that do? 
What would that do? If the insurance company has all the money and they see a trend in us mamas and papas insuring our children, they would command that they not shoot our children down in the street because who has to pay if they do? We don't protect that which matters most. It's a brand new solution. It's a brand new solution. It's, it's, it's solving the problem with thinking that didn't create the problem. It's doing something different rather than doing the same thing over and over, which is a sure sign of insanity, right? Doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results, right? So if we march, if we sit in, if we form groups and organizations and we're blah, 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 like we usually do until it dies down, right? And then in, until the next one, but we still don't have a solution. We have a solution, and it's been right in front of our face the whole time, but not because we, we are entitled to it. And so here's why we don't know. The bank will insure your money up to how much? $250,000. At $250,000 or less, you are a consumer. How many have heard of the consumer index? right, the consumer index, right, it's one of the markers that they use to, to determine how much value, <laughs> how much value is in the market, because they know they can count on the consumers to do what? Spend 1.2 trillion dollars in two seconds, every year, six seconds, every year, right, they can count on it. So everybody under the $250,000 is considered a consumer. $250,000 and one dollar makes you a individual investor. It changes your status, okay? This is not an entitlement. This is something that you do deliberately. Like when you pay yourself first, that's something you do deliberately. Okay, like when you stop meeting, when you stop giving the 401k more than the match, that's something you do deliberately, not because you're entitled to. You with me? Okay, so at $250,000 and, and $1, and you are now an individual investor, there are laws on the books. This is the part that might make you mildly to moderately, to significantly uncomfortable or angry. There are laws on the books that say that if you do not make $250,000 a year or have it in discretionary income, that there is financial information that is against the law to share with you. How many schools teach something about financial literacy in the United States? By design. I said earlier that we're not necessarily in the condition so much so of our own fault. Because if our parents had known better, they would have done better. They would have taught us, right? They would have shared this information with us, right? And, we would, and more of us would be in the indexes already because we would know. Well, how, how is that possible? Because Transamerica was, has been around since how long? 1906. Aegon has been around, around since how long? The 1800s. The 401k has been around since 35 years ago. The 7702 has been around 100 years. Because it's about value. And if you, don't, if you are part of the consumer index, they can, they're not gonna tell you because if you, turn, if you change from being a consumer to being an investor, 
Who's going to spend money at Michael Kors? Right? Who's going to buy all the ridiculous stuff? <laughs> Who's going to do that? So it is in the interest of commerce that we don't know. So this is the part that pissed me off, that made me go get a license to become a financial professional so I could be on this stage tonight and tell you, share with you, hope to impact your life, hope to inspire you to do something different, hope to educate you in such a way that you now begin to put systems in place for a different kind of lifestyle, to transform your life at your own hand with this knowledge, system of knowledge and process about how money works. How money works. So our babies, and I have a 36-year-old son who's incarcerated for firing back. Am I mad he's in there? Yeah. I think I would have been shooting back too, though. Okay? So there is no demilitarized zone. All right? So having that be real clear on this particular night, when we're talking about value, we need index accounts in our families on our children, on ourselves, to create value so that the insurance companies will say, leave them alone. Because we've been saying it all along, and is it working? It ain't working. We need the strength, right? I started talking about the strength, right? We need the strength of the financial industry to say, they are worth something now, more than chattel. We get to protect that which matters most. Y'all all right? Take a deep breath. Relax. Let it go. Take another deep breath. I can't hear you. Let it out, yeah. Because it's already on us. It's already on us because of the verdict today. It's already on us. And I'm not going to stand up here and act like it doesn't exist. OK? We get to choose where we want to be. And so how do we help families make those choices? We have what's called a financial needs analysis. And in that financial needs analysis, we help you deal with the, the six, six, right? Six steps to financial independence. Not financial entitlement, right? Not financial handout, financial independence. Because we want to be free, right? Right? Remember? Right? We want to be free. <laughs> right? Yes. We've got to do the fist, right? We want to be free. Well, freedom in this country is about commerce. It's about commerce. There's only six steps, not 60 steps, not 600 steps. Six steps. Cash flow, emergency fund, proper protection, debt management, Building and preserving wealth. What is cash flow? What is cash flow? Right, your money comes in, right? And your money goes out, that's a flow. Cash flow, they call it currency for a reason. Right, current like water, right? It flows, right? Cash flow, money in, money out. Money in, money out, <laughs> out, out, out. Okay, <laughs> right? A lot of us feel like that. So if I share with you 
how to, how to move yourself into the tax-free column, have we increased your cash flow? Yes. Yes, we have. Because if you can keep Uncle Sam out of your pocket, you have more money for yourself. And at 55%, we better hurry up and figure this one out. Okay? Cash flow. If I can tell you how to outpace inflation. So how inflation is 3.5%. Did you know that? Inflation is 3.5%. That means if you, didn't get, if you did not get a 3.5% raise on your job, that you're still under the bus. All right, so what, is it, so what is inflation? Cost of living. Eggs went up, milk went up, gas went up, water went up, everything went up. Everything went up. So if you don't increase your cash flow, it keeps going out and out and out, right? Cash flow, it keeps going out. So if you have, how many have a budget? Okay, you don't have to raise your hand for real. All right, I know, all right? So, don't lie. <laughs> okay. So the, on, the, on, the, on the balance sheet, there's the income side and there's the expense side. So how many things are on the income side? Maybe two, right? If it's you and a spouse, that's the income side. How many things are on the expense side? A lot, right? Income, not so big. Expenses, really big, right? And we spend 95% of our time paying attention to what? The expenses. So, 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 so let me give you a news flash. Expenses will always go up. Milk went up, eggs went up, gas went up. Expenses will always go up. If you're gonna spend 95% of your time Worrying about the things that's going to go up that you have no control over. Hello? No control over. And you're spending 95% of your time over there. You can't sleep at night. You can't hardly eat. You're irritable. You're fighting with your spouse. You're getting a divorce. Right? I mean, all that stuff goes with not enough money. Right? Right? Arguing about money. So if you're going to pay 95% of your time on the expense side, how much time do you have to spend on your income side? 5%. You don't have enough time to be creative to, to figure out how to make more money because you're looking at the wrong side of the sheet. A friend of mine said, we, leave, we live from crisis to crisis and we never figure out how to increase the cash flow. The 95% of the people are always looking for ways to increase their cash flow. When we get introduced to things that can, introduce our, that, that can increase our cash flow, we run. Go figure. Right? Because it might take us away from the soap opera or the sports or the whatever the whatever distraction is. Hanging out, whatever it is. Okay? Whatever it is. Cash flow. Proper protection. We talked about proper protection. Did this make sense? Did what I share with you tonight make sense about protecting that which matters most? Can you see the correlation between what I'm talking about? Yes? No? Does it make sense? Can you see the flow of the dollars and the lack of value? Not because, not because well, some are because they have no value, but mostly because we didn't value. Mostly because we didn't know. The love that we have in our heart is the value. They don't operate like that. Okay? Value. So proper protection against loss of income. Another big thing. So if a husband and wife are the only two income, income um, um, inf inflow, right, on the balance sheet, if that's the only income and one of them dies or is, dis is disabled and it's a $100,000 income family, you cannot squeeze a $100,000 lifestyle into $50,000. That's not going to happen. So you protect the income. Sure, life insurance is about being able to, with dignity and honor, lay your loved one to rest. Absolutely. Absolutely. But what about the family? 
Now what happens? You sell the house, you sell the car, the children can't go to college because now you only have this much income when you're used to having this much income. And, because the, and the grief of the loss of the loved one is enough without having to have the financial grief, stress on top of that. Okay, can you feel me? Right? So, protecting against loss of income. It's a new model of reality because we think about life insurance just about laying our loved one to rest and stating the rest out, letting it go to probate, right? We don't know what to do. We have solutions for this. The index is enough. If, if these beloved ones had a half a million dollars each, do you think maybe they could fight the family? That the family could had an option to fight, right? Yeah, yeah, with half a million dollars, I think so. House will be paid off, car will be paid off, all of that's paid off, and now I got a war chest. Yeah, I got a war chest now, right? And I have a living, I have a memory. I can build something in the community that's lasting. Transamerica has been around since 1906. How do they get to be around for centuries? Centuries. And we create businesses and foundations, and I have a foundation as well. And when the, when the owner of the foundation passes away, the whole thing is like goes up in smoke. It's just like it wasn't ever there before. And Melissa is fortunate in the fact that she is carrying on a legacy, right? Carrying on the Thelma Smith Foundation legacy, right? You are, you are to be applauded for that because that is not what happens. That is not typically what happens. So when we talk about proper protection, it's really about creating legacy because we would have legacy, $573 million worth of legacy, and that's just in one year, okay? Legacy, that the children could be taken care of. Remember, how, how old was the baby when they put the million dollars on her? 15 days old, right? Legacy, legacy. Emergency fund, how, many, how much money do you need to put away for an emergency fund? Three to six months, they say. Now, they say nine to 12 months. Well, why is that? Hmm? Your job might not, your job will not come as fast because of layoffs, right? Because of downsizing, outsourcing, and being replaced by a robot. The job not gonna come as fast, okay? So you need nine to 12 months worth of liquid. That means cash, okay, stashed somewhere in case of an emergency. And what do we know about emergencies? <laughs> right, there's always an emergency. Whether it's the refrigerator, the tire on the car, the child needs this, whatever the case is, there's always an emergency. Life happens. Life happens. So you have to, what they call in the financial industry, mitigate the risk. Because like expenses always go up, an emergency, okay, right? We kind of expect them, right? And don't let something good happen in your life, right? Oh my God, something good happened? Oh my God, what's getting ready to happen next, right? We so superstitious, right? And we, we create the next disaster, right? By, our, by the way we think. And we speak it into existence, right? Because we're in expectation since we got, we got a blessing over here, something really good happened, and now we're looking for, yeah, we're looking for it. That's crazy, okay? That's one of the things we get to change. All right, we did cash flow, we did proper protection, we did emergency fund debt management. We said that the average family is $118,000 in credit card debt. We have solutions for that. Solutions for that. You can consolidate, yeah, you can start, you can pull it all, put it all together and get a loan to pay off everybody and now you got this one fat $118,000 debt 
<laughs> right? Just all it's just all in one place now. Right? That's called consolidation. You still got to pay. You might have to pay less. You might get a lower interest rate, right? And because we think credit is king, right? We think credit we we yeah, yeah that's no say that. Right? We think credit is king because we've been conditioned that you got to have a 700 this and a 680 that. Right? We've been conditioned to think that. They're not telling us about wealth. They're telling us about how to feed the beast. How to keep feeding the beast. To the tune of $118,000. People lose their houses and go into bankruptcy because they can't figure out how to get an extra $500 a month. Okay? Get divorced. Right? Because they are $118,000 in debt. And what? <laughs> and they got to pay alimony. Right? Okay. Right? We could, can we add child support to that? Okay, y'all need to leave the brothers alone. All right? They got enough reasons to go to jail without us making them have a problem. Okay? About our children. Because we can do this. Hello? We can do this. Thank you. We can do this, and it eliminates what? I know y'all tracking. We can do this, and it eliminates killing and loss. It eliminates child support. Brothers, it eliminates child support. How old is the baby when you put the, when you put the policy on him? 15 days old. Okay, so if the daddy go away, who cares? Okay? Right? <laughs> okay? Right, we would hope for better, but the statistics are not telling us anything better. I'm just, real talk? Real talk? I need to drink some water. Y'all drink some water. Yes, you need some. One. Okay, I got a few. Okay, good. Don't leave. Okay, it's more than this, but that test is not going to get you free. This, this, this information can get you free. Okay. All right. All right. Are we clear? Do we understand value a little bit better? Okay. Woo. All right, so building and preserving wealth are conversations we don't even have in our community because we ain't got no wealth. We got rich, right? Rich is money you have now, so you can buy rims and live in a nice gated community, but you ain't leaving nothing for nobody because it ain't enough, and you don't even have enough for your own retirement, but you flossing, right? You flossing, right? That's rich. We got rich, wealthy people got wealth. Wealth is a good man leaveth an inheritance for his children's children. I'm a great grandmother. My thought process is, how do I leave enough money for my great granddaughter's great grandchildren? Legacy. Legacy. That, that's value. Y'all with me? OK. We almost done. OK, I didn't want you to leave because you have to see this slide. OK. Okay, you, and you will. Okay, then you're welcome. I knew that would work for you because you said we'd be expecting disaster. So, see, I knew that would work for you. So, <laughs> so I said everything is commerce, right? So let me put this in context for you. This line up here that you see going over there underneath where it says timing is everything, does everybody see that? Okay, that's money. That's money, all right? Remember when I showed you the, the chart with the Greek big gray bar and the little small bar, right? So government spending and the tax rate, right? You remember that? That started in 1946. In 1946, 78 million babies were born. The soldiers came home from World War II, and every family that could have babies had about four. 78 million 78 million babies were born. 
They call us the baby boomers, right? They call us the baby boomers. The baby boomer generation, watch the money. The first thing that babies need is food. Who is the baby food company? Gerber. Why do we still know that name? They got, they got, that's right, right? Exactly. We know that Gerber baby food blew up on the scene when the baby boomers showed up. All right? By the time the baby can lift the spoon and feed themselves, they need what now? Toys, right? Tonka, Barbie, Mattel, Fisher Price, right? Okay, toys. There used to be a KB toy store in every mall. There is not one in every mall now. You have to go to Walmart or to Toys R Us, the big box stores, right? Interesting, we all know that. The next thing happens, the soldiers came home, every family that could have babies had how many? Four. Four. Women, for the first time in the United States of America, were allowed to work, to enter the workforce. With four children at home, who has time to cook? Okay? Fast food. Enter Ray Kroc, McDonald's. Dave and Wendy's. The Colonel and Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> Two different things. Okay? For real. Now, we know that back in the day, Henry Ford invented the first car. Well, the baby boomers came along and the Ford Foundation put out the first muscle car. What was it? The Ford Mustang, first muscle car. Yes, yes, we got one uh, uh, enthusiast over here, okay? Cars, and the Mustang has, now the ba this, is, this is the money from the baby boomers. The Mustang has morphed into what? The minivan, and now the minivan is now a, an SUV. Are you following? After the cars, most of us are old enough in this room to remember the real estate boom and the real estate bust, right? So, but there was housing, right? Because all these 78 million babies, they need a house to live in, right? Yeah, they sure do. So now the real estate bubble has burst. In 2008, people lost more than half of their money because the real estate, not the real estate, the stock market, is manipulated and it dropped. They confiscated all of the money of the people who's in the market that don't need to be there, right? It's called cash, it's called the confiscation of cash. When you play games, you don't know the rules to. And they crashed the market every eight to 12 years, like clockwork. But because we're not paying attention, we don't notice there's a pattern. All right? So now, where are the baby boomers? Retirement. Hmm? Trying to retire, right? So now the baby boomers are all the way over here. So, 78 million people are move, have moved this money into present day. Right now, today, right under our nose, 10,600 baby boomers are retiring every day and will do so for the next 18 years. For the next 18 years. We are living, hear me. I feel like Morpheus. Zion, hear me. No. <laughs> hear me. Okay? The money is moving. Right under your nose, we are living in the greatest transfer of wealth in the history of the United States of America. The same money that made the baby food company that we all know the name of, Gerber, is now over here in the retirement sector, okay, making some other people rich. The baby boomers are moving the money. So when you get ready to retire, what, what's, what do you do with your money? You work for a corporation, you're getting ready to retire, what are you doing with your 401k or your pension? You got to roll it out of the company, right, into something else. Who's moving that money? Financial advisors. I am. Okay? And you can. 
We are living in the greatest transfer of wealth in the history of this country. And, when, and, and because we are asleep at the wheel, we don't realize that there's money all around us, but we are so disinterested in money, although we spend every waking hour of the day thinking about money, using money, letting it stress us out, but, we don't, but we're only paying 5% of the time on the income side. And money's everywhere, okay? And all you have to do is pass a test. That's all you have to do is pass, is pass a test. Okay, you're gonna pass the test. So where else is the money moving? To Gen X and the millennials. So our children and our grandchildren are inheriting money. What do they have to do with it? They have to put it somewhere too. Who's moving that money? Financial advisors. Yes, I am, and you can too, okay? This is the chance of your lifetime to make yourself wealthy because there's so much money moving and we would not have this problem, okay? We would not have this problem if we would get serious about building and preserving wealth and creating legacies in our families. That is why we use the financial needs analysis that other companies charge $5,000 for. We do it free. We come into your household, put a whole strategy together for you to get you to understand and show you based on where you are and where you want to go, based on your goals and dreams, how to create wealth for your family today and in the future for your grandchildren's children's children. So why did I say if you can't talk about money without talking about business? Because there's so much money moving and baby boomers are retiring. Financial advisors are baby boomers. And they are retiring also, which is leaving 200,000 career opportunities available. We need financial advisors. In Salisbury, we need financial advisors to help us get into families' homes and create value, okay, and guess what? They won't even see us coming. While they parked out on the interstate trying to make sure we don't march down there and shut it down, we inside somebody's house creating value, okay? All right? So, and when, who has 200,000 jobs? When's the last time somebody told you that dude, they got a job, they got 200,000 jobs? Right? We already said it ain't no jobs. This is a career as a financial professional. Many do it as an encore career. How? You don't have to have a financial services background. You don't have to know anything about money. You can hate math and make millions here. Okay? You can test drive it. You can start out part time. We are in the growing, we are growing in the underserved market. We will be opening an office here in Salisbury in August, September, okay? We are looking for financial professionals, okay? World-class financial education. You came in here, let me say it like this. Have you learned something since you've been here? Yes. Yes? Okay. I can pass Yes, you can. You can pass this test. Yep, mm-hmm. Yep. And we have a system, right? So when you go in McDonald's, right, everything, no matter where you go in McDonald's in the world, everything's in the exact same place. Because when you buy the franchise, you buy the system. And if you screw up the system, they take your franchise from you, okay? We have a system. We have a system. It's a reverse franchise. McDonald's will cost you $3 million to get involved. Right? It only costs you $100 to get involved with us, and you can make $3 million here. Okay? And I'm, I'm not, and I'm saying that because I know actual fact. All right? Actual fact. So, you know, and I already said, you know, we're looking at the 
expenses and we're not looking at the income side, and then when we get an opportunity to, to increase our income, we run, right? So the power of choice and strength on our side, strength on our side. How does it work? Show me the money. Help four families in our community create value with $185 a month contribution, pay yourself first, with a $185 contribution into the index, and that'll create a commission based on $2,200, which means you can earn $4,000 just helping four families a month. I said earlier that people are bankrupt and losing their houses because they can't figure out how to make an additional $500. Okay, my first 30 days in the business, and I've been with WFG for three years. I've been licensed since 1998. I'm a businesswoman. I've made my first million by the time I was 28 years old. I get it. Okay, so <laughs> she did it first. I just, you know, yeah, right. And so, and so, let me tell you the other side of that story, though. So I have a black belt in making money. I also have a black belt in losing money. Okay, <laughs> okay, so let's just be clear, because money comes and money goes, but value stays, value. I didn't know what to do with all that money, right? I've done it several times over, right? But nobody taught me what to do, because how many states in the United States teach anything about, okay, all right, so you feel me? So, help four families. Help four families, you can make $4,000 a month Spent doing about 90 minutes to three hours tops in serving a family, okay? Two positions up, three positions up, doing the same four families, you can make eight grand. Add a team of five, we're opening an office in Salisbury, okay, with a team. Add a team of five, all right? And now what's happening? You're making 15 grand a month. And the people around you are tracking right with you. Tracking right with you. Okay? We need a new model of reality. They will never see us coming. We coming for the money. We coming to create value. We coming to stop the violence. Okay? We coming to create justice for us. It's a money issue for this, but to get to the, the index, it's not about how much money you have, it's about how much knowledge you have. It's about how much knowledge you have. And my, and, and, and my desire for you tonight is that I've given you some knowledge that you can use starting tomorrow or tonight. You can get your financial needs analysis for free. The money just keeps growing. You can cross over that barrier of $250,000 in this business. It's your business. It's not a just over broke job, okay? You get to take personal responsibility for how much money you're gonna make and instead of being entitled to a check because you showed up and punched the clock, which is where our community has gotten very comfortable and we didn't have corporate jobs until after the 60s, all right? So, that's the money. Watches and rings and travel, right? My the rest of the team is in Palm, Palm Springs right now. And we'll be in Vegas in, in uh, August. And then there's, and there's Australia and there's all kinds of wonderful, there's Hawaii in February. Woohoo! You can do the hula, right? Um, so there's all kinds of recognition. I asked you to keep in mind three questions. One. Do you know someone who could benefit from this message? Do you know someone who could benefit from this message? Yes, okay, great. Write their name down. I need a clipboard. They're right here. Excuse my butt. Okay, so thank you. So we're gonna ask you how I did on a feedback sheet. 
and what you might be interested in. And if there are people that you know could benefit from this message, put their name at the bottom. I promise you we're not going to call your people and harass them. Okay, I promise you that. All right? Number two, can this information help you and your family? Can this information help you and your family? Okay. All right. Did we learn something today? Okay, so can this information help you and your family? And are you intrigued by the business? Okay, so please fill out the feedback form. And also on the sheet is, you know those slides I skipped that talks about the money ministry? You can take that home with you, and that information will be there. And if you are, if you know that you know that this might be of interest to you, we can, thank you, Kelly. Give Kelly a hand, yay. All right. So you're gonna get your money ministry, and if this, is, if this has struck a bell with you in any way, fill out an application with us and set yourself up for an interview to come in and see if this is a good fit for you, not make a commitment, see if this is a good fit for you and is it a good fit for us? Because we're looking for financial professionals, like for real, for real. Because this gets to change. This gets to change. So, I wanna thank you for coming out tonight, on this night in particular. We dedicated tonight's message to Lorenz Ferguson at the beginning of this presentation because this is an event that we had 50 RSV RSVPs to, right, Melissa? Yes, yes right, um, and more. And the atmosphere of the police officer being, what's the word? What is it? Exonerated, thank you, thank you, because I wasn't gonna choose a beautiful word like that. Being exonerated, yes. And so people are taking that I hate it and staying home and doing whatever it is they do to forget. But we can't forget because unfortunately It'll happen again, right? When we, we, thought when, we thought when it was Trayvon that that was the, the last time. How long ago was that? Okay, so I, I thank you for your permission for allowing me to make you mildly to moderately to significantly uncomfortable with this conversation tonight and for not falling asleep on a very serious because I, I don't take it personally. If you, people fall asleep in here, it's because they can't handle the information. It ain't me. All right? I'm, I'm clear about that. It's because they can't handle the information. So thank you for being here, being present, and for taking this information in. I would say take what you learned here tonight and put it in use in your life. Schedule your financial needs analysis tonight. Thank you. God bless you, God bless you. Um, the foundation, the, the Thelma Smith Foundation brought food, <laughs> okay? So there's refreshments for you, for your enjoyment. And if you wanna talk to us, um, would everybody who can answer questions stand up so everybody knows who everybody else is? Okay, thank you so much, God bless. <laughs>